Hi, this is section 6.1, slope fields and differential equations. Uh, why don't you start with this first one and do this warm-up problem by finding the derivative of y equals x to the ln x. The only way you can do this, as far as I know, is do logarithmic differentiation. So if you need to maybe take a look at this, I'll do the problem, but you should pause and be able to, most of you should be able to do this. However, if we take this, uh, y equals x ln x. Whenever you have a variable to, this is a function of a variable, this is a function of a variable. And so if you have a, a variable raised to a variable, you have to use logarithmic differentiation, which would be take the log of both sides. So if I do this, we'll do the natural log. And so I go ln x raised to the ln x, but I can take this ln x now and I can pull it out in front. So I get ln x times ln x, which is the same thing as ln x squared. So if I differentiate this thing, I get 1 over y dy dx, remember chain off your y's, is equal to, I can do this with the product rule, first times the derivative of the second, plus the second times the derivative of the first, and I get the same exact thing twice. And so with this, I'm going to get two of those. So this is 1 over y dy dx is equal to 2 ln x all over x. Now I need to solve for dy dx, and so I'm going to multiply both sides by my y. So I multiply both sides by y. Those y's cancel. And I don't want y in my answer, so I'm going to back substitute whatever my y was originally. So then my dy dx is going to be equal to 2 ln x over x times my original, which is my y, x to the ln x. So that's logarithmic differ differentiation. Now what we're going to move into is something called slope fields. And slope fields are a function of a differential equation. A lot of times we know how a function behaves for as far as its slope, but we don't know what the actual equation is. What we can do is we can create a situation where we see a lot of what the function looks like based upon slope fields, and we find slopes at certain points, many points, and then we get a feel for the flow. In physics or vector calculus, they might call it a vector field. We're going to call it a slope field. The difference is, is that vector fields have direction, so they put little arrows here. So this might be a flow of some uh, system, water, or comets, or anything. And so we model it with our slopes at particular points. Now this gives, give me, this gives me a general idea of how things flow. So if I drop I always say if I drop my hat in the water, if I dropped it in the water right here and I follow this lo these lines, I don't have to go right on top of them exactly, but I follow the flow, I would get this shape here. However, if I dropped it here, I would get this shape here. So it all depends where you drop it in. Uh, there's some other pictures here. This is just off of Wikipedia. And so here's some other flows, a uh, vector field on a sphere. And then they even talk about the, the flow of air around an airplane and a vector field for that. And so these occur all over us. And so we're going to figure out how to show these and develop these. So if we look at the sheets that I gave you that are called slope fields by Nancy Stevenson from Texas, here's an example that we have here. And this is a slope field that... Uh, is defined to be dy dx is equal to x plus 1. Notice that this is exclusively in terms of x. So what I can do is I can pick some points, and you can start seeing some patterns with this too. I can pick some points, and I'm going to draw a short segment for wherever the slope that I find occurs. So if my slope is 1, slope of positive 1 is a 45, so I make a little segment like that. If the slope is negative 1, then it's going to be a 45 down here. If I have the slope of 0, it's going to be a horizontal line. 
that's not exactly horizontal, but that should be. If my slope is undefined, then we have a vertical line. And then the last one is if my slope is 0 over 0, I have nothing. Not, 0 over 0 is nothing. Slope of 0 over anything besides 0 is going to be 0, so this would be a horizontal slope. So let's look at this. If I take some points, so for instance, what if I start at 1, 0? So I'm going to write in 1, 0. Then I find my slope according to that. And so if I plug in the points, well, all I need really, this is only in terms of x, so I only need my x-coordinate. So I take the 1 and plug it in, and I get 2. So then my slope at 1, 0 is going to be 2. So that slope is a little bit more than a slope of 1, and so I'm going to draw that right there. If I go to the point 1, 1, oh, well, all I need is this point here, too, because this is exclusive in terms of x, so that's going to be a 2. So if you notice what's going to happen here, everything up and down here is going to have a slope of 2. So I'm going to draw it like that. Now if I pick a different point, how about if I pick 0, 0? So if I go 0 plus 1, I'm going to get 1. So this would be a slope of 1. So I draw that. Make sure it's long enough so you can see it, but not too long so it flows into the other points. And once again, if I have any x-coordinate that's 0, I hope you can tell this. If not, you just got to go do it yourself. I'm going to get all of these slopes to be the same at a 45-degree angle. I'm not perfect with it, but I'm, I'm not doing too bad. Then if I take a point, for instance, negative 1, 0, this is just based on the x-coordinate, and I'm going to get a slope of 0. So I'm going to go like this. Same here. And so you can finish this one. And what I'd like you to notice, though, is that for this one, all of the, if since it's defined in terms of x, this is all the same up and down here. This one's a little bit too steep. These are all the same. These are all the same. These are all the same. So every column is going to be the same. So do the same thing with this one finish this one first, but do the same thing with this one and see if there's a pattern and how that works or conjecture what kind of patterns you're going to have. So what I wanted you to do with these sheets is that I want you to uh, do the first two pages and then come back to the notes and I'll have some other things to give you. Okay, so try that now. Okay, bring your first two pages of the slope fields to completed ones to class and we'll check them when you get there. Now, uh, if we do differential equations now, we've done this many times, we've seen something like this. So if I ask you to find the general solution to the differential equation, you should be able to do this. So if you want to pause and try this, you may. But we want to try to get uh, all the x's over here to the right side. I already have the x's in the terms there, but I got to get the dx over here. So I put the dx there. Then I integrate both sides. And when I integrate this side, this is like 1 dy in terms of y. So this would just be equal to y is equal to antiderivative of the sine is negative cosine. And then this would be x squared over 2. So this would be 2x squared and then plus c. This would be my general solution to my differential equation. Now notice that this plus c makes it so I have an infinite number of general solutions for this. So I'm not going to graph this perfectly and it won't look perfectly, but if I have one like this, then they all will look like this all stacked up depending upon what my value of c is. So I have an infinite number of these that that possibly could be. However, if you look at part two, I ask for the particular solution. That means that I have fixed one of these with a point namely 0, 5, and 0, 5 tells me that I want exactly one of these curves, not a bunch of them. So if I do this, I'm really just finding my value of c. So this would be 5 is equal to negative 6 cosine of 0 plus 2 times 0 plus c. Cosine of 0 is 1. So I'm going to get c is equal to, looks like 11. 
Okay, so if we write this solution, y equals negative 6 cosine x plus 2x squared plus 11. That would be my particular solution that goes through this point 0, 5. Now, if you look at this next one, you'll see that we have differential equations that come up that look a little bit different than what we've been dealing with before. This right here means that if I take the second derivative, that's going to be the same thing as my original function. So when I take the difference, it's going to be equal to 0. So they want us to find all the functions that satisfy that. Or more likely, what they'll do is they'll give us a function. They'll say, okay, verify this. Make sure that this works for these functions that I've given you. And there's a course that some of you may take if you want to get into engineering. It's all about differential equations and such. And with that, you would be doing a lot of these type of equations. So this just means that 2 times the first derivative plus 6 times the original function would overall equal 4. And so on. That would be similar. So here's an example where they would just verify. So verify this given curve satisfies the differential equation that I've given you here. So we'll try this. Now really what we do is I just find this y prime, I find y, and then plug it into these pieces. So if I do y prime, well that's easy, this is just going to be negative e to the negative x. And so if I plug this in, I'm going to get 3, y prime is negative e to the negative x, plus 4 times my y. Well, I'm not going to use y, I'm going to use e to the negative x is equal to e to the negative x. So when I do this, this is negative 3 e to the negative x plus 4 e to the negative x is equal to e to the negative x. Is that true or false? And maybe I should put a question mark here. And then sure enough, that would be true. e to the negative x is equal to e to the negative x. So this has been verified. So you'll do examples like this in your homework just to justify, or I shouldn't say justify, but to verify that a given equation satisfies this differential equation. Now there might be other ones that satisfy this too, but this is one that they're looking at at that particular moment. Okay, so that's the end of the section. It probably took you a little bit of time to do those first two pages of that slope field assignment. Uh, however, uh, this is one of my shorter videos, thank goodness to all of us. And get into the, um, in class, we'll get into the homework and get this thing rolling. All right, I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you very much.